Robin, let's have some fun now. If you remember, I, I think you would remember this. A couple of maybe months ago, we asked you to write down some things on a piece of paper for a handwriting analysis. Yes. And uh, a bunch of us did it here at the show. On our phone right now is a man named Bart Baggett. He is uh, considered the leading handwriting uh, authority in the world. One he of them, analyzes anyway. handwriting? He analyzes handwriting. You've seen him on a million different television shows. He was on our show. I don't remember him, but he's been on our show. I know we've had our handwriting analyzed once. Was he the same guy? Perhaps. Uh, let me, hey, hey, Bart, my, hand, my uh, memory is spotty. What, I've had you on the show before, right? Yeah, almost uh, 10 years ago. And at that time, did you analyze all of our handwriting? Just five of you, and I think I got the thumbs up because you said you were going to mock me but decided that actually I knew what I was doing, and I was gracious and appreciative of that. Uh, Bart Baguette. You say Baguette, right? Yes, yeah, Baguette. Bart Baguette's website is uh, handwritinguniversity.com. And uh, he, how do you say it, almond or almond? <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, what he has done is, we, we, there's a bunch of us at the show. I'll tell you exactly who's participating. Uh, Fred, Gary, Scott, the engineer, Ronnie, Robin, of course, Richard Christie, Howard, J.D., Benji, and Sal. Oh, each, that's quite a list. Each staffer was asked yeah. to write the same paragraph, the same exact one. And, and, and by this... Uh, Bart, you can tell uh, a person's basic makeup, right? Yeah, personality traits. So just like psychology, self-image, emotional outlay, sex drives, intelligence. There's about a list of 90 traits, and we just had a big sentence so that I could pull, uh, you know, five or six key traits from everybody to find some distinctions. Bart is such now, an expert. Now, who uses you? Who uh, uses you? Well, I, mean, I was about to say, Bart is such an expert. Uh -huh. that uh, he once testified in court in a case about a husband forging his wife's signature on a prenup. Uh -huh. And what did you find in that case, uh, Bart? Well, I, I go to case all the time here in Los Angeles, but basically if someone forges their name, I can identify a forger or not. You're this that good. is different. We're doing personality here, which is... No, I'm just saying it's, it's amazing that you are actually called in on court cases. That's how much of an expert you are, lest anyone think you're not. But no, no, forging yeah. is different than yes. reading someone's personality. Yes, but I'm trying to point out the guy's an expert, for fucking Christ's sake. Let's move but on. But a different kind of expertise. Yes, yes, okay, we know oh, that. Geez. Oh, jeez. <laughs> when does he use this to analyze um, personality? And why? Well, I think people would choose to do this to improve their relationships, and I travel around the world. We have a, we have a thousand certified graduates in India and Taiwan and America. So some people use this to get some personal insight and to improve their relationships. That's what I used it for. In fact, Bart oh. is recommended by the mayor of Los Angeles. Is that correct? It is. It is. Yeah, and it, it makes it, quite it a good living life. doing this. He's, uh, he, it says here that you charge $995 just to start a case. Is that correct? That's correct. Right. That's correct. All right. So let's, I mean, uh, it, yeah. let, let's get on with it. Uh, this is a handwriting analysis, Robin, that is uh, very expensive and very, very, very intricate and also very scientific. Okay, so what will he do? Will he read the traits and then we'll try to guess who it that, is? Yes, we'll make some fun with it. <laughs> uh, would you like me to start with sample six, Bart? Yeah, look, as I recall the last show, we had some confusion because there's so many moving parts. So yeah. let, let me start with five people, and you guys can guess. So Robin and Howard, you're out of this group. This is not you. All right. So we've got five samples, and, and I'm going to start with one of them, and it would be one of the following five men. Okay? Okay. You want to take notes? So Scott, Gary, Sal, Richard, or J.D. That's, that's the first group. Scott, Gary, Sal, Richard, or J.D.? Yep. Okay. All right. Let's start with the first one, and, and, and Howard, this is number six, if you're looking with Okay, I am. Okay. Here's a guy, at an early age, decided to trust no one, not be vulnerable, depend on himself. He's got a cool and calm persona, but a troubled childhood. Hmm. He was so traumatized at an early age that he has unresolved resentment from childhood, which colors his judgment, and he makes him angry for no reason, simmering inside. J.D. I want to say J.D., yeah. What do you say, Fred? I'll, I'd go along with that. George, you have no idea, right? I have no idea. Right. Okay, let me go on a couple more. Well, I would the, you, you don't want to, you're not going to tell us? Well, yeah, yeah. I want to give you a couple more pizza, because if you're right, I'll tell you, but this is not J.D. 
Oh, oh it's okay, not. we're wrong. Yeah, you're, you're, is right, this you're Scott? I would call him a pissed off tough guy. He has massive confidence. He would be a great NASCAR driver, fiercely independent, ambitious. This is the same guy. Same guy? This is all number six. Well, that would be Ronnie, but he's not in this group. Yeah, I was going to say, that's not, Ronnie's mm. not in the group. That's why I didn't guess him. So it's uh, all right, who is it? Just tell, me, just tell me who it is. Scott. Who is it? This would be Scott. Oh, oh, oh. I got him. You know what? Fuck the game. Just tell me about these guys. <laughs> you know, the game is just ridiculous. All right. Tell me, uh, tell me about Sample 7. Tell me, who it is. tell me who it is, and then I want to listen to it. All right. This would be Gary. This would be Baba Booey. Go ahead. Um, smarter than he gets credit for. He has a problem following directions. That's true. Because he doesn't listen worth a damn. He doesn't listen at all. In fact, I have always said that about Gary. Gary's a terrible listener. What you know, Gary accuses me of that, and I'll cop to it. But I'll tell him to do something, and he, he's like, he he goes, he he's like, I could just tell he's zoning out or not listening. He's busy listening to himself. Yeah, and he doesn't get it right. Well, I have a theory. He he doesn't hear you in the first place, and then if he does hear you, he does the opposite because he's defiant and rebellious. No, oh, really? All right, go, go to sample number eight. Who is it? Oh my God! This guy is an emotional roller coaster. This would be Sal. <laughs> Go ahead. Tell me about what you found in his handwriting. Well, he, his handwriting looks like an epileptic chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Which means what? Which means he's an emotional roller coaster. He's impulsive. He feels guilty the next day. He's bossy, a little self-destructive. He has a massive need for public approval, and is above-average sex drive. Oh, yeah, that that's sounds a- like Sal. Now, when you do these, do you know who you're looking at, or you do them cold? Do you do them blind? Well, I I, I actually don't know the guys we're talking about now because I you know met you guys ten years ago. Right. You know, I do them blind, and I do my best just to stick with what's in the handwriting. Every time I've tried to guess or mind read them off, so the the if right. the T bar is high or the you know the Y is big, it means big sex drive. If the D is Gary, big, he got you right. You do not listen. Well, so I got a question. So what is it that you saw in my handwriting that tells you that? There is a E, like in your last name. Mm. It is narrow and skinny, which has no space in it like your ears are closed. Mm. Yeah, that means you don't listen. Narrow E, close And mind. you're defiant. Right. And you are defiant. And he's right about you. <laughs> that, that's an easy uh, trait, Howard. If he, I had to really write the word monkey. Half of your staff has got a big capital go to hell K. Ah, and that yeah. means defiant. I and see I would that. say half uh-huh. your people are defiant and resentful and angry. <laughs> well, that's wow. the truth. Uh, defiant, and, resentful, and, and angry? And as a boss, I don't stomp on their heads enough to keep that under control. Go ahead. Give me sample number nine. All right. Now, this is this one's confusing me because number nine writes like a high school girl. Big, round, <laughs> fluffy, bubbly handwriting. Must be J.D. or Richard. That's it's Richard. Sure. It's Richard. I would girl. say Richard, yeah, yeah. like a girl. Because Richard is, I definitely think he's got some gay tendencies. Do you think, uh, George, do you think Richard's gay? Well, uh, you know, I think he's probably got the possibility of being bi. Right. He could go either way. I agree. Uh, what did you find about Richard? Well, it's funny you say that. He is the most sexually promiscuous. He can get talked into something really sinking kiki, and then lie about it and swear it never happened. <laughs> right. I believe that. Tell me about J.D. What would you find with him? You know, he's, a, he's an odd bird. He, he writes uh, <laughs> kind of like a, um, a mad scientist. Right. <laughs> um, he's aggressive. He's got great eye for detail. He has what I call an L. Ron Hubbard D, which means that he will uh, be a great writer. He's probably a, a very hmm. intelligent guy, but socially awkward. And it's odd because I think he's actually quite aggressive. I'm not saying he's tough, but he would simmer and then get really pissed off and be aggressive. Well, you know, he hmm. happens to be a good writer. You're right. I happen to know that about him. <laughs> Is that right? Think- In fact, he communicates very well when he writes. It's just when he talks, he's a fucking mess. You're absolutely right about him. And now. he's always angry at somebody. Remember, he's the one that fights with, uh, you know, always has a fight going with somebody on his staff. Yeah, that's true. Of all the people, he would make the best terrorist. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> but he's like the Unabomber, but I don't think he's quite as mad and angry as the Unabomber. He's just intense. Tell me what you found with me. I, I, I don't care about these other people. <laughs> <laughs> you finally want to get to your... Yeah, yeah, I can't wait anymore. I'm so sick of hearing about them. <laughs> Tell me what what sample was I? What number? Uh, you're number two. Number two, let me see. 
And and actually, you know, you've changed a little bit in the last ten years. And and I I, I think you went back and looked. Better. Well, I went, I went back and listened to the tape, uh, the audio from ten years uh-huh. ago. Right. And he he was. He was a little more sensitive to what people thought, and now I don't think he gives a damn. Ooh, I know. Interesting. I don't care what he you really, think. No, he doesn't. I, right. think, I think I think your downfalls are stubbornness and vanity. Yeah, imagine me being vain. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so tell me about me. It says here I'm too honest and blunt. All right, can be dominant and pushy, of course. Yep. Borderline brilliant. That's absolutely correct. And thinks what? faster than I, I, I'm a borderline brilliant. That means well, I, I, brilliant, I, just on the border. Yeah, of I'm it. on the border of being brilliant. I told you, Robin. If I was brilliant, I'd be in a different career. Um, let's see. Thinks faster than others, but his downfall is he believes he's smarter than everybody. Oh. Well, if you're arrogant and you're stubborn and you're bright, then you just argue yourself into thinking you're always correct. Which, right. if you're really bright, you probably are correct most of the time. I can't argue with any of this. Handwriting similar to Hitler and Einstein. Hmm. Yours? Um, yeah. Hitler? That's right, oh, Robin. You've always wanted to don that mustache. <laughs> yes. Do you, know, do you know I was going to get the Hitler mustache, uh, Bart? I would be a great dictator. <laughs> you know, Howard, your, your ego's not as big as it was 10 years ago. I think you've been not humbled, but maybe more mature. Is that fair to say? That's absolutely right. Lots of therapy. Do you therapy. think that could be psychoanalysis? Yeah. Yes, well, of course. He doesn't have the need to prove himself or the the bravado and arrogance that I think uh, probably helped you get there, by the way. It's not a bad thing. You, you, you have took a lot of arrows in your back. Well, I, I I'm an elder statesman now. I've done yeah, it all. I, That's right. Yeah, I think he's mastered all of his uh, opponents. Tell me, which sample is Robin? I'm going to read hers. Rob, Robin's number number three. Let me see. Needs more affection than currently getting. Well, don't we know that? <laughs> she, she, She'd admit that. She obviously writes more feminine, but yeah, she's affectionate. She's desire for attention. I, I think you need to throw her some more love, Howard. She's not getting the spotlight as much as she wants. Uh, that's true. Uh, takes criticism very personally. That's true. She's very. That's true. She really does get hurt. Uh, doesn't believe people can handle the truth, so tells strangers a lot of white lies. It's true. She does That's lie. That's true, yeah. Yeah, you told me yesterday on the phone I that try you to, lie. I try to soften everything. <laughs> <clears throat> well, it's interesting. There's one letter. It's the letter O, and she has little double loops in the O. And so the rest are hearing me. It's not bad. I don't think she's devious, but normally that just means they have white lies. So if someone says, do I look fat in this dress? No, honey, you don't look fat. And look at but that. She just figures but people look, don't deserve the truth because they can't handle it. But look at that pretentious mm. signature of hers. I mean, look at <laughs> You've it. always said my signature is pretentious. I know. I never uh, I never liked it. She she doesn't even, uh, she puts a big O and then, uh, I mean, a big Q and it looks like an O and, and it doesn't even just scribble the line. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's the easiest to forge, Robin. So you better you might want to change that. Yeah, that's, that's right. To, well, that's that. Yeah, you know, you are probably right. Who else you got here? Tell me about Ronnie, the limo driver. What number was he? You know, I found him one of the most interesting guys here. I, I really did because he is full of emotional torment. What number is oh. he? He's number one. Oh, look, tries to please everybody. Full of spite, anger, and revenge. Worst enemy you can make. Paranoid and hostile. That's true. I mean, really, and, and I'll tell you, I, I don't know him, but I would be very mindful of getting in a business relationship with him because <laughs> it's never his fault, and, well. and because he has been betrayed so much by his friends in the past, he just thinks people are going to betray him, and then he's going to be revengeful, and I think that eventually I'd land on his bad side, and, and he'd be a real jerk to me. Yeah, I mean, we've had people say that Ronnie is a borderline uh, maniac, I mean, like like almost insane. Yep, I agree. Wow. wow. But he's got a good self-image, so when he gets uh, when he decides to take revenge, he's going to do a great job at it. There you go, Robin. What does we that learn, mean? We learn nothing. <laughs> we, 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 it proves that uh, you've uh, identified everyone properly because we learned nothing new. We knew this all about people anyway. <laughs> you guys are good friends. You know, we miss Fred and Benji. I, oh, Fred. Benji confused me. That's, Benji does confuse everyone. No, Fred confuses me. Fred writes normal. At least you can read it. But if I just had Benji's handwriting, I would swear he's mildly retarded. <laughs> Benji, did you stick it up for the test, or did you? was this your real handwriting? No, I, I have poor handwriting, but I was also really tired the day I did it. I Tell think. me about Benji in a nutshell. What did you, you learn from him? 
uh, he, he's, he's got a little arrogance. He has a false bravado that kind of masks his low self-esteem. I think it's a spurt of achievement. He hates religion. You know, there's a lot of people on your show that have a anger at God or religion. See, I love being Jewish, though. Hmm. You Go might ahead. love being Jewish and still hate God. Uh, yeah, look at his handwriting. You do look borderline retarded. Maybe I am. Yeah. Good Lord. <laughs> uh, he's got a big heart. He works hard to prove himself. He's possible temper, pushiness, and lateness. Yeah, well, that's oh true. Oh, my goodness. That is true. Yeah. Uh, he's not a bad guy. He's just, he's just not the, you know, sharp and What about guy Fred? What did you learn from about him? <laughs> he's fast-thinking, witty, honest, good self-esteem. Those are the positive traits. The negatives, he can be petty, jealous, anger at God, temper, sensitive, and he wants to be a perfectionist, but I'm not sure he has uh, gets it right every time. Hmm. hmm. I don't know what to say. I mean, it's, he, you confuse me even more about Fred. <laughs> I've learned nothing. It's interesting. Well, Bart, thank you. Uh, you can check out handwriting expert Bart Baggett's website at handwritinguniversity.com. Thank you very much. Yeah, my basic course is free for your listeners today, so check it out huh. and uh, analyze your oh, handwriting course. today. It's absolutely free. Yes, I would like to be a handwriting expert. <laughs> handwritinguniversity.com. Thanks, Howard. Imagine when I go on these talk shows, they would say, Howard Stern, radio personality and handwriting expert. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might take that course. Thank you. There you go. All right. Thank exactly. you. All right. That's Bart Baggett, everybody, who knows something about uh, our staff and their handwriting. And, and as you can see... Why um, are you... I, I don't think you're borderline brilliant. I do. I I'm think right. you're brilliant. Uh, you know what? I do, too, but it'd be awfully pretentious to say that. <laughs> <laughs> if I say it, it's not right. And you're not That's bad. That's why I said it for you. <laughs> Maybe the Kennedy Center honors will honor me. Mm, i got to think about this thing about little white lies. Do I tell little white lies all the time? You do. No. You tell me I'm handsome. Oh, oh stop it. <laughs> She's pretty honest with most of us. Yeah. <laughs> well, not really. She She's, <laughs> She's, I mean, when, she's, when she, has something she wants to say, she doesn't hold back. She's a diplomat.